Yes guys, what's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another preview for you guys today. And yes, the international break is over. That means for the next four months, all we have to think about and worry about is Chelsea and Chelsea alone. We no longer have to think about Southgate ball. We no longer have to try and drag ourselves through a two week international break and try and hope and pray that our players don't suffer some sort of BS injury through it. That's all done, it's all finished. We ain't gotta worry about that anymore. It's back to Premier League football. and Chelsea Chelsea start with a trip up to one of our least favourite grounds, St James's Park. We're going to go through the preview, lineup predictions, players that may be missing through injury. We're going to go through everything Newcastle versus Chelsea in this video, so stay tuned. But before we start, if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button and press that bell notification button as well. Yes, the content the last week or so has dried up, but you got to bear with me. The international break is so, so long and I'll be real, international football football ain't my thing. I'm sure you lot probably get the hint from that based on my content and how much we dry up through the international break, but international football it ain't my thing. I already follow England like that. I'm club over country. Hate me hate me if you want. I really don't care. That's just the way I move and that's more my preference. So when it's the international break, sorry, not sorry, the content's gonna dry up, but we're back now. So we're gonna have daily content for the next four months. There's nothing for you man to worry about. So guys, hit that bell notification button, like and subscribe, and let's go straight into to this preview. Chelsea travelled to St James's Park for the early kickoff against Newcastle United, where Chelsea can temporarily move to the top of the table, maybe for a few hours, but it'll still be good to get the feel of it. But Chelsea will be moving to the top of the table with a victory at St James's Park if we can get it, and that is a big if because travelling to St James's Park, if you've been a Chelsea fan, for at least the last five or six years, you know we hate a trip to St. James's Park. One of the big positives of us being in a lockdown and not being able to go home and away is that I don't have to travel up to Newcastle away. I don't have to take that long ass staircase up to Newcastle, up in the away end in the gods as well. Also, I don't even know why Newcastle is still the only away team in the Premier League that can still put their fans up in the gods where everyone else has to put them pitch side. But that is a story for another video. This is one of the reasons why I'm glad I'm not going up to Newcastle because it's an absolute drag. Last season, we made the long trip up. We took like a seven hour club coach there one way and seven hours back. All to watch us can see the last minute winner in the 94th minute because Tyrannosaurus Kepa yet again couldn't get his hands on a ball. So yeah, I am glad we're not going to Newcastle, but it's not Newcastle that's the bogey team for us. It's St. James's Park. Five out of our last six games against Newcastle have been Chelsea victories. But when we turned that into trips to Newcastle, we've only had two wins there since 2011. And it's a massive bogey ground to go to for us. Injuries as well do not help either side. Both teams are suffering through the international break and being forced to play a 12.30 kickoff straight afterwards. Newcastle are suffering through hella injuries as a result of that. We've got players that have come back too late to be, to be registered for this match as well. So there's issues with both sides, but same way, this is also a great example for Chelsea to try and show their title credentials. And over the last few months, we've been doing excellently. We won our last four games with an aggregate of 14 to one, if I remember correctly. We've, we are unbeaten in our last eight games in all, and in all competitions, yeah, in all competitions, it's our last eight games. But overall, in 90 minutes, we only lost once this entire season. And that, I think, is going to be very crucial for us towards the end of the season as well. Because to start the season, there was a lot of imbalances around the squad. It wasn't the complete side that we see now. But even in that case, we only lost one match. Yeah, we drew a couple games here or there, but draws are always better than defeats, if we're going to be honest about it. At least you churn out a point from there. Especially in the case when you're 3-0 down to West Brom and you pull it back in the final minute. Fine, that's a decent point. But the fact is, even in our worst this season, we've only been beaten once. And that came against a Liverpool side where we were down to 10 men and we still had Kepa tax in effect. So technically, it doesn't really count. But still, the point still stands. We're in amazing form going into this fixture. Same way with Newcastle, you don't really know what side to expect. In their last five games, they've won two, lost two, drawn their last one. They've also, they also haven't had successive wins or draws this entire season. So we don't really know what Newcastle to expect, but same way, this Newcastle side does look like a team that we should be beating, even if you want to take the St. James's Park judge into effect. We should be beating this Newcastle side. They've also got combined the lowest shots on target 
and if I remember correctly, they haven't kept a clean sheet since the opening day. And when you've got the top goal scorers in the Premier League coming over to your ground as well, and you've got those sorts of stats being hold, held over your head, the game should really be going one way. But we don't want to just think like that. We don't want to get complacent and think this should be three points. It'll be a walk in the park because that's exactly how you walk out of St. James's Park with no points. Newcastle will be cautiously optimistic for this game. They know recent history goes in their favour. They know we don't like travelling up to St. James's Park. And same way, extra travelling after two weeks of international break isn't going to help us. And we've also got a couple injuries. Thiago Silva won't be featuring in this game as well. But we're going to talk more about that in team news. So there is a lot of other outside factors to try and think about. But fact is, we still should be getting three points in this game. Especially with Tottenham Hotspur coming up next. This is the perfect game to set a marker for. And for some players who aren't going to be playing regularly as well. There's a good chance for them to try and have a good impact and try and get more game time under their belt too and try and compete for a starting 11 spot. There's going to be a spare centre-back spot that we're going to talk about later with Thiago Silva out. Also, Christian Pulisic out for around the next week or two and Kai Havertz as well. But we're going to discuss that going into team news. Moving swiftly on into the team news and both teams are going to be missing key players and also both managers have spoken out about their frustration with the Premier League for having this fixture on at 12.30 with a lot of teams having players coming back from international duty at, at Thursday afternoon. For Chelsea, Thiago Silva arrived back too late and because of that he's going to be out for this match. Kai Havertz as well has only just come out of self-isolation, but because of that, he does still need to get himself up to full match fitness. So you're probably not going to see him start. You might see him come off on the bench, but he's definitely not going to be starting this match. Christian Pulisic as well. Frank Lampard said he's going to be out for another week, maybe another two weeks. So we'll be lucky to see him even have a feature against Spurs, if we're being honest. But with Christian Pulisic this season, we do need to just manage him very slowly. So I'm willing to play the patient game with Christian Pulisic. Newcastle, though, they've got a number of injury absentees for this match. John Joe Selby's out, Dwight Gale, Martin Dubravka, Ryan Fraser, Paul Dummett and Matt Ritchie are all expected to be sidelined for Newcastle. Callum Wilson also may not be risked after avoiding a serious hamstring injury, but there's question marks of whether he's going to be fully fit for this match. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him benched as well. So both teams are really going to be struggling struggling with injury problems. But I do think for Chelsea, this is where our depth comes really in clutch in hand for us. I won't see too much change into the lineup. But even with the lineup that I'm going to put out, I do think this is going to be a team that should easily be walking out with three points if we take away the St. James's Park judge from the equation. But let's go into the lineup. We're going to start off in goal. Easy choice, Edouard Mendy. Just thank God he has to come out of this international break injured just like the last one because we all know what happened when we put Kepa in goal against Southampton so we're good to see Mendy back in goal right back we're going to go for Reese James who's had an excellent international break and yeah just slots straight back into that position we're not going to make too much of changes in defense the only change we're going to make is the obvious Thiago Silva um, absentee from this match so we're going to go for Kurt Zuma as the starting center back next to him I'm pushing more towards Antonio Rudiger because they both have played together and they got a clean sheet against Krasnodar so I'm willing to see it a second time. If we have Christensen, I wouldn't be too against that but same way with Christensen, if he does play he has to have a good performance because the last time he played was that uh, game against Southampton and we all know how bad he was in that performance and how bad both of them were in fact together in that performance so that's why I'm leaning a bit more towards Rudiger and Zuma it might be a bit more solid but like I need to see it to believe it as well like well, we've already know what Rudiger's like we've seen it last season so we'll, we'll wait till we see it before I start bigging it up too much but that's my preferred back too Left back is Ben Chilwell. Don't really need to speak too much about it. We don't really want to see anyone else play there. Let's move on. We're going to put Kante in the lone DM role as well because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You already know I still have slight reservations about it against a strong pressing side, but I don't think Newcastle's going to be that side, so we ain't got to worry too much about it. So Kante slots in the lone DM role, and we're going to go for Mateo Kovacic and Mason Mount as the two attacking eights. Mateo Kovacic as well scoring two goals in his last international in his last international game, which I think has already equaled his tally for Chelsea since joining us. So hopefully that's a few more goals for him because he did look very threatening going forward in that last game against Sheffield United and nearly had two chances to put the ball in the back of the net so let's hope he builds on those performances we're going to put him in again for this match with Kai Havertz out as, again as well 
And Mason Mount slots in as well because he's been perfect ever since we switched to 4-3-3. Moving into the attacking third, we're going to go for Hakim Ziyech on the right because he's literally made that position his own. And right now, I'm having questions about whose right foot is better than Hakim Ziyech's left foot right now. That is a dangerous left foot and we're not keeping that left foot on the bench. So Hakim Ziyech starts. Tammy Abraham as well. He is really giving Frank Lampard a massive selection headache. But these are the sort of selection headaches that you want. So we're going to go for Tammy up front. And as expected, Timo Werner plays on the left with Christian Pulisic out again. Um, if I want to give a score prediction, I don't know if I really want to with our record at St. James's Park, but I'm going to do it anyway. 2-1. Um, should we go 2-1? I hate 2-1 score predictions because they're the easiest ones to do. It just basically says both teams get a goal, one team edges it. But I do think it's going to be that sort of game. We just really need to get a win here. Just end the St. James's Park curse. Two wins there in the space of three years, in my opinion, ends the curse. So please, Chelsea, let's go up there. Let's get it done. Let's get the three points and let's move on. But guys... This is the end of my match preview. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the match review. Check out the watch along on Blues Fans TV. And we'll see you soon. Take care and up the Chelsea.